Tonight's video is looking at some more advanced variables that we use in Python. So by the end of this video, you will understand the list variable type that we use in Python. So, so far we've introduced you guys to three different types of variables, strings, integers, and floats. Now strings are basically characters, they're enclosed in inverted commas and they have functions and methods that you can use to actually do operations upon them. Integers are numbers, um, they're whole numbers, they don't have a decimal point and you can use the modular um, symbol to get the remainder when you're doing a division. Um, floats are numbers and they do have decimal points and remember easy way to remember that is a decimal is actually a floating point decimal. So that's the three that we're looking at so far. So tonight we're going to look at a new one called lists. So what are lists? Well basically lists are a variable container that can contain many items in an ordered way. So if you want to think back um, to our initial analogy of lists of variables being containers. So, and each container would normally contain one item. Well, lists actually can contain a number of different items. Um, it's really useful to store items which are somehow related to each other. So it may be um, a student details are all contained in a list. It may be that grade results are contained in a list, but they're variables that are somehow connected to each other. It keeps them together. And lists have two parts. They have a name and they have an index and you just need to know that at the moment and we'll learn more about that in our next lesson of how you use names and indexes. So I said before that lists contain um, information or a group of, of different values and they're stored in an ordered way and they're collected together. So an analogy I'd like to use is maybe that one of drawers. So if your dad says to you, can you go and get me the 13 mil socket wrench, please? And you say, where is it? And he says, it's in the second drawer. So you go looking for it and you look through the drawers in the office and the drawers in the kitchen. And finally you find it in the drawer of the toolkit. So here you can see the idea of the symbolism of, of a list. So your dad, to be more accurate, would have had to have said, can you go get me the 13-inch socket wrap from the third drawer of the toolkit? So in that, we have the label, which is the, um, or the name, which is the third of the toolkit, and then the actual location, or the index, which is the third drawer. So in a lot of ways, that's how lists work. Lists are an overall collection. So here we have a collection here, and a collection here, so a collection of office, collection of kitchen, a collection of tools, and they're ordered in such a way, in this case in drawers, that they're easier to find an item when you're looking for it when they're stored away. So it's the same kind of way of how a list works. A list is a collection of items which are put together in an ordered way. Another common analogy of, of a list is that of the, the drug um, container that we have here. You can see here, and this drug container, which often will contain a whole lot of different medica medic medication for different days. And each day has a particular label, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. So if you had to go and get grandma her medication, they will say, go get the medication container, and can you get the drugs that are for Tuesday, because today's Tuesday. So in the same way, lists work in the same way. Lists have a name, which they're given, and then they have a whole range of different slots in there, an unlimited range of slots, and they are recorded by the index. So the index is zero through to six. So this would be list, um, list name, position zero, and you can put an item in here. You put another item in here, another item in here, and so forth, and keep adding to it and accessing it and working with it. So that's lists. Um, in our next lesson, we'll look at how we actually use lists in class, but it just gives you the general concept of how lists operate.